And you thought Rickles was gone. <laughs> Phil Zachary, I, you've been so patient. Uh, you're one of the actual working general managers and executives in the bunch. Are you sorry you came? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, uh, the current head of WRKO from Entercom, Phil Zachary. That's right. Uh, thank you. L let me, uh, I'm uh, 41 years in the radio business and uh, 33 years as a general manager. So I am of you, I'm a radio person, and I started as a disc jockey. I, I wanted to play records and meet girls, and like most of you, and, uh, but I wasn't as good as most of you. Uh, so I ended up as a manager, <laughs> and, uh, and here I am as a regional vice president with Entercom. I grew up listening to WTIC and Bob Steele, my, my parents, and Perry Yuri was the general manager at that wonderful station, and Jack Hobbs, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm in good company here. I, I'm gonna live a good long life, and this is very encouraging for me, because these guys are... But let me just tell you, if I may, um, because I can't, I can't share stories, I wasn't at RKO, but let me tell you what you mean to me, what all of you in this room mean to me. And as I look around at the people here, as I look at, at, at JJ and, and Tom Murphy, and. And, uh, and Harry Nelson and, uh, and, uh, and all of you, and, and Chuck and, 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 and Joel and, and Al Gates and, and everybody. This, for a kid who grew up in Connecticut, um, I was 13 years old when this station came on the air and I grew up just outside Hartford, so I had a chance to hear all you guys as you were coming up. If you wanted to be in the radio business, there was no better place to be than Hartford because WPOP and WDRC and 13 Waves in New Haven and WPRO in Providence and, and because everybody wanted to be there so they could maybe get to New York or Boston. So I heard a lot of you when you were on your way up and I'm gonna tell you something, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for you. I really wouldn't. Um, I was a kid with bad acne that couldn't meet girls and, and you know what, for me, you guys were Mick Jagger, you guys were John Lennon, you guys were Neil Diamond. You guys were Marvin Gaye. I couldn't tell the difference between the records and you. I couldn't. To me, you were just superstars. And it, what, it's what caused me to say, this is what I want to do for a living. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. My father was a blue collar worker. And no one in my family ever went to college. And he said, just promise me one thing. I don't know about this radio thing, but please get a good education and we'll see what happens. But but I knew all I ever wanted to do was to be like you. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I would sit with that tape machine and I'd try to sound like you and I would try to walk up the records like you and I was just mystified by what you did. And I have 300 employees now in this region and the thing that I lament so much and the thing that you really need to celebrate here tonight is that you are artists you were real craftsmen. You were entertainers. You were right every bit, every bit the equal of that music you played. And to this day, I can't hear those records, whether I hear them on Sirius XM or you know some other means, without hearing you in between those records. And without those elements in between without who you were in between, those records are meaningless to me. They don't mean anything to me. And they don't mean anything to a whole generation of people who grew up believing that you were part of those groups, that that's who you were. And I have to sit here and thank you with all my heart, not only for making my young life so special, but for allowing me the spark and the privilege to earn my living for the last 41 years in this business. You did that for me. You put me up here at this table. I don't belong at this table. I'm not like you guys. But I am so thrilled and proud to be here with all of you because I listened to every one of you on the radio, every one of you. And I said, how can I ever be as good as Mike Adams? How could I ever be like Chip Hobart? How could I ever be like J.J. Jordan? How could I ever be that freaking good and that's what's missing today 
is we just don't have those types of people. <laughs> and we don't have those program directors. We don't have guys like that. And I tell you, there isn't a day that I don't come up that elevator. And the first thing I say to myself is, holy shit, I'm general manager at WRKO, okay? But the second thing I say to myself is, holy shit, I could have been on WRKO if I had a great program director <laughs> that cared about me to call me on the hotline and say, don't do that again. And that's what's missing now, is we don't have artists anymore. We don't have the kids that come in on the air before the Polish show on Sunday morning and play the tapes and play on the cue speaker the show that they really want to do. We don't have that anymore. And one of the reasons we have the show on Saturday night is because I can't let that die. It can't go away. So please know how much you mean to me, how much you mean to our business, and how honored we are as Entercom to be a part of this celebration and how much we're looking forward to tomorrow night when these incredibly talented, amazing entertainers will once again be on the 680 frequency, blasting all over New England so that people can hear the magic again, because anything, it, it was nothing less than that. Every break, every day, every single hour, that's what you did. Thank you for doing that. Thank you very, very much. Phil, that's the second time I've heard you speak. The other time was when we dedicated the Dale Dorman Studio at Massasoit College when Dale's family donated that. And nothing's changed between then and now. You are a class act, and thank you very much for making us all feel really special. Chuck Knapp, the guy who introduced me, let me do the same honors for you, my friend. That really touches my heart. That's why we got into the business. We uh, listened to Dan Ingram, and we listened to uh, all the people that were out in Los Angeles, uh, Robert W. Morgan and uh, the real Don Steele. And we, we, we grew up Dick Biondi out of Chicago, and we grew up listening to that. And my great prayer is that that could return, that Entercom and other uh, principal owners of great radio stations would say there's something missing today. And what's missing is what you just outlined, and that somehow or other they would allow us to come back in and be a part of this again. And so... Thank you for touching my heart. You're uh, just tremendous, Phil, from all of us.